Hey everyone, you're probably wondering why I'm here. I have a strong resemblance of someone you all may know. My name is Al Cruz. I'm here to welcome you to NAMI California's 2020 virtual conference. Mental illness is not a small topic. People live and struggle with it daily. I, in fact, live and struggle with anxiety. I go and see a therapist and I practice self-care. I know that I am not weak when I have anxiety attacks. I am strong. I have a strong voice and I'm standing next to you today to help fight to make California a better place. Just remember that you're not only fighting for you and your family, but you're fighting for me, the next generation. I would like to introduce my mom, the CEO of NAMI California, Jessica Cruz. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. Thank you for your bravery, your strength, and for being the best daughter. I come from a long line of very strong women, and my mom told me that I needed to be the change that I wanted to see in this world, and that my experiences are my strengths. And all I can hope is that I pass that along down to my own daughter. You see, her sharing her story with you is as part of her strength. Just like everyone here, we have a story. As family members, as individuals who are impacted daily by mental illness, we know that our stories, although unique to our own families and ourselves, are very common amongst the group of people that are here today. Thank you all for being here. It's because of you that we're able to continue to raise NAMI's voice throughout the state. Over the last 10 years that I've been with NAMI, we've made significant strides, not only at the Capitol, but locally, where every one of you live. Where there's a NAMI, there's a way. We have all been impacted in one way or another about, by NAMI, whether it was a family to family class, a peer to peer class support group, a NAMI on campus club, or you saw a presentation. NAMI has impacted you in your heart in one way or another. And this conference today, our very first virtual conference, is going to cultivate all of your ideas and listen to speakers and learn from each other, interact with each other. Even though we're not together in person, we are still very much connected to one another through our stories. I just wanna thank you from my family to yours for joining us here today. For many of you, this is your very first conference. And to you, I wanna say welcome to the family. For others, you've been here for many, many years, and this is your first time virtually connecting with us. Thank you so much for your continued dedication and support. I'm so excited for the speakers, the workshops, our exhibitors, our sponsors that we have here today to help us make this possible. I am so thankful for each and every one of you for taking time out of your day, the next two days, to join us as if we were together. Thank you so much and welcome to NAMI California's 2020 Virtual Conference. Hi, I'm Alex Badia, California Secretary of State, and I'm proud to be part of this important event alongside NAMI California and each and every one of you. You know, we're convened here today to continue important discussions and dialogue about mental health and to empower ourselves with the information and resources that we need to better meet the needs of our families, of our friends, of our neighbors, and of our coworkers. And it's through these important discussions and conversations that we also work to eliminate the stigma that's too often associated with mental health and too often is a barrier to treatment for people who need it. Now, this year we've gathered uh, with an awareness, an acute awareness of the impacts of COVID-19 from a health perspective and an economic perspective on so many of our families and our communities. We're also beginning these conversations with a heightened re recognition and respect of the traumatic impacts that systemic discrimination and institutionalized racism has had on too many of our friends and our family members. And so uh, I thank each and every one of you 
for your commitment and for being part of today's efforts, but also for the work that you do throughout the course of the year, advocating for the resources and the policies that we need to better meet the mental health needs and the well-being of all Californians. Hi, I'm Daryl Steinberg, and I want to welcome all of you to NAMI's annual conference. I know this year is virtual because this has been a year like none other. And amidst all of the challenges and difficulties, there are some silver linings. One of them is that your issue, our issue of making mental health the public health priority that it must be, has been elevated in part by, because of what people are dealing with during this coronavirus, and it's long past time. Uh, mental health is having its day, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate the NAMI advocates who have stayed with this issue through times when it appeared that nobody really seemed to care. You are heroes and heroines to me, and I'm very proud to work with you. Let's keep going and make sure that we have a system where no one has to suffer needlessly, where families get the support that they deserve, and where we live in a better and healthier world, brain and body. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great conference. Forty years ago, Harriet Shetler and Beverly Young, our founders, two women who would become the foundation of our NAMI DNA, our mold for miracles, were faced with a kind of wrong thinking that threatened to crush them. They were mothers, each one with a child with schizophrenia. And they had doctors who told them it was their fault. Imagine hearing that from a professional that you respected. Harriet, Beverly, you're parenting wrong. You are the illness. Dare to care. My hunch is that these women felt very vulnerable at that time. Now think about it. No one is 100% sure their own critics aren't at least part right. Still, they clearly had a strength of character, of caring and determination that far exceeded the doctor's opinions. They found it, Nami, not in self-pity, but in honor of their children, committed to a healthier arc to their life's journey. I would say the way we've adapted to the changes of this year prove what I believe we are. Unstoppable. Virtually unstoppable. Just look what we've done in this fickle, volatile, unreliable 2020 already. Turning our signature fundraising event, the NAMI Walks, into NAMI Walks Your Way. A vibrant virtual alternative. NAMICON, our annual convention, traded nation in-person networking with something even more intimate and far-reaching. An online NAMICON that saw registrants this year from every state and 38 countries. 25,000 plus registered and nearly 13,000 attending. Wow. Dare to care enough that you don't care what some people think, especially the people who think you don't know enough. Moving forward, NAMI will leverage our experience and expertise to increase our strength as an organization and alliance, as well as the strength of all of the change agents in the mental health world, including you. We will increase our dependence on and belief in diversity, equity, and inclusion. When you leave out people, you leave yourself behind. We will continue to create and convene partnerships, increase our financial strength for everyone in the Alliance. Where does this lead us? To get people the best possible care. By 2025, we will have influenced public perceptions of the value of peer-informed mental health education, support, advocacy, and care. And we will underscore the value that got us started at NAMI. Awareness of the range and severity of certain serious mental illnesses, such as schizophrenia, major depression, and bipolar disorder. We will continue to fight for legislation on the federal level with Congress and the administration to get the best possible care. Expanding even further telehealth capabilities among many other initiatives. I am very proud of our mental health initiative for frontline health and public safety workers. We are partnering with Starbucks and others on this initiative. 
A COVID guide has been created in both English and Spanish to answer frequently asked questions regarding the intersection between COVID-19 and people affected by mental illness, their caregivers and loved ones. We're more mobile focused than ever at NAMI as well. And we look to maximize the third screen. We will leverage technology to be more efficient, amplify our advocacy and public awareness efforts, and reach more people through our education and support. We also must double down on getting people diverted from involvement in the justice system. This is especially timely as we are beset as a nation by racial trauma and injustice, systemic obstacles that seem more and more impossible to surmount. The NAMI Board of Directors has issued a resolution on racism addressing this. We must be intentional in our approach. We must not simply condemn racism and call it a day. NAMI, in order to fulfill our mission, must be actively anti-racist. To that end, we must continue to fight to eliminate the mental health disparities perpetrated by racism and racial discrimination. We must continue to spread awareness about the negative psychological, social, educational, and economic effects caused by racism. The disparity in access to mental health care in communities of color cannot be ignored. Neither can the inequality and lack of cultural competency in mental health treatment. We have said this, and I will underscore its importance. NAMI stands in solidarity with everyone impacted across the country. We are in this together, and you are not alone. Let me make another thing clear. The endless circle that sees human beings caught up in the justice system is not just. It's a way of ensuring that this uncaring system continues almost on its own with us powerless to stop it. This is fertile soil for mental illness and an invitation to grow the crisis all the time. Dare to care. When there's an emergency, we all know to call 911. What, what would you call 911 raised to the power of NAMI? We'd call it 988. We're advocating 988 as a three-digit mental health and suicide crisis line number. And we're also advocating for Medicaid coverage 30 days prior to release from prison. I am particularly gratified with the NAMI Sharing Your Story with Law Enforcement presentation program, too. It trains peers and families to share their stories during law enforcement trainings. To paraphrase myself, dare to share. After hearing these stories during their training, officers report experiencing more empathy and understanding for mental illness, and they have an increased desire to adapt their responses to people experiencing a mental health crisis. NAMI's goal is to ensure that every law enforcement officer has the opportunity to participate in this training. We can't stop it alone, but we are not alone. We are working as a vital alliance of 48 NAMI state organizations and more than 600 affiliates. We are working as limited human beings, committed to ignore limits by blazing a trail together. We are working as human beings on behalf of our humanity. In the final analysis, caring is a cause, one that underlies all we do at NAMI. It's invisible, intangible, difficult to measure on a sliding scale, but no one can argue that it's not the most powerful tool we have for changing our world. NAMI is not here to play politics or take sides. The only sides that concern us are the left and right side of our hearts. What do you think keeps that blood pumping? Yes, it's love, friendship, loyalty, compassion, and caring. Let's take an example. When a human being has been laid low by the law or by an accident, when that person is feeling the life drain out onto the street, who does that person call for? That's right, their mom, their dad, their loved ones. We've all seen it on social media. So many times we either look away or walk away. The person who dares to care never looks away or walks away. They reach out to anyone who reaches out for them. 
in words, or sometimes in a desperate silence. They advocate for change, for the pain to stop. Whether it's get away from my son as a parent inserts themselves between the source of pain and the loved one who is feeling that pain, or an organization that does the same thing. We are all called upon because we care. And we care because we dare to do so. Thank you for everything you do here at NAMI. Whether you are a part of the Alliance or a NAMI Walks event or work tirelessly to tip the scales in favor of mental well-being or are new to NAMI, thank you, all of you, for daring to care. Hi everyone, I have a special letter to read. Uh, our governor, Gavin Newsom, was not able to uh, record a video for us, so he sent us a nice letter um, on his behalf, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna read it. Dear Jessica, congratulations to NAMI California on another outstanding year of accomplishments and services to those living with mental illness and their families. California has long been a leader in the fight for a better care system for mental health, and I couldn't be prouder to stand alongside of you and your incredible community leaders from across our state to make sure that people living with mental illness and their families are given the same opportunities at a happy, healthy life free from discrimination and stigma. California has moved forward this year in unprecedented ways to meet those very real challenges, and I couldn't have been prouder to have signed so many important bills to advance the need for people living with mental illness and their families. Some of these included critical legislation such as SB 803 by Senator Jim Bell, which supports statewide standards for behavioral health peer support specialists and adds these services as an option to Medi-Cal. SB 855 by Senator Scott Wiener, which strengthens California's mental health parity statute by requiring commercial health plans and insurers to provide full coverage for treatment of all mental health conditions and substance use disorders. And AB 3242 by Assemblymember Jackie Irwin, which establishes streamlined ways to use current technology such as telehealth to make sure individuals in our emergency rooms are able to be evaluated with less delay. I appreciate that NAMI California and its 58 affiliates across the state moved quickly this year to get programs online and available to those in need. These programs have provided a critical stopgap to the ever-growing need for services and community-based supports for those who are isolated and vulnerable during this difficult time. As we continue to move through the past COVID-19 and other challenges, we face this crucial service you provide will be needed more than ever to address the second wave of mental health need we see growing every day. Thank you again, Jessica, and to your incredible group for outstanding advocacy across the state. You work every day to serve your communities and speak truth to power. I stand with you and look forward to a brighter tomorrow together. Sincerely, Gavin Newsom, Governor of California.